Hello CCF, welcome to our prayer and fasting. Come on, wherever you are right now, let's worship our God. Oh, you are God, and we lift you up. We keep singing, we keep praising, oh, we won't stop giving all we got. Cause you're worthy of all glory and glory. Let's spread 
your truth, God. Spread the truth and shatter the lies. You are the one, Jesus. The one who is to come and save who was lost. The King, the King of heaven. God, you are worthy to be served. This is our cry. This is our declaration that we will go for you and your kingdom, God. We will go for the kingdom. We will serve the King of kings. We will go for the kingdom. Lead us so to you we will go for the kingdom we will serve the king of kings we will go for the kingdom lead us oh god lead us to you we will go for the kingdom we will serve in the world. Welcome to day five of our new beginning CCF Intercede Prayer and Fasting. I am Eric Totanyes and thank you for joining us for tonight's Prayer Watch. Ever since I was small, prayer has been an important part 
of my life. You know what? I actually got my very first Bible when I was seven years old. Um, my tita Nana gave this to me. Actually, it has a date on it. I, I made sure that I posted it. Um, June 16, 1985. My tita Nana invested in my life by giving me, as early as seven years old, a very important investment, God's Word. Not only that, there are adults who committed to pray for me. My tita Dada pray for me up until today. If not for their commitment, if not for their um, investment early on in my life as a young, small boy, I'm not sure if I'll end up where I am today. We can influence people through prayer and scripture. With the prayer and the investment made by these adults in my life, it made an impact in me. It made me who I am now. It's not because of the great things I did. It's not because of the great things they did. It's the power of God worked in me, influenced me through the power of prayer and scripture. But how can we influence our kids, the youth, and the singles in our church? What are the ways we can help them influence to become missionaries, to live purposeful lives, to influence them and encourage them to boldly share the gospel and walk in a manner worthy of the Lord? We will pray. That's right. That's why we are here tonight. We will pray and our focus for the next several minutes of our time together. We will pray for the youth and our singles. Let's start by reading this passage from Colossians chapter 1, verses 3 up to 12. We give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love which you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven, of which you previously heard in the word of truth, the gospel, which has come to you, just as in all the world also it is constantly bearing fruit and increasing, even as it has been doing in you also since the day you heard of it and understood the grace of God in truth, just as you learned it from Epaphras, our beloved fellow bond servant, who is a faithful servant of Christ on our behalf. And he also informed us of your love in the Spirit. For this reason also, since the day we heard of it, we have not ceased to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you will walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, to please him in all respects, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all power, according to His glorious might, for the attaining of all steadfastness and patience, joyously giving thanks to the Father, who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. This passage is filled with faith, a passage filled with thanksgiving, emphasizing the importance of prayer. So what can we learn from this passage to help us apply God's truth in our lives today? There are just three things that I took note reading this passage. Number one, we must always pray for our youth and singles. Just like what Paul said, I pray for you always. I always pray for you. Number two, we must pray for their spiritual growth. Number three, we must pray with thanksgiving and faith. That is our attitude in praying. We come before God in faith, with thanksgiving. That's how we will approach prayer. Number one, we must always pray for the youth and singles. Paul mentioned this in Colossians chapter 1, verse 3, when we said, We give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. You know, that's Paul's commitment to this church. That is Paul's commitment to Epaphras, praying always for you. And that is also our commitment to our youth and our singles. We will always pray for them, praying always for you, like Paul. Let's all make prayer a constant 
in our ministry. Let's all make prayer a priority in our ministry. Do we always pray for our young people? We can read this in Acts chapter 6, verse 4. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. Our devotion, our ministry is devoted to prayer. Just like the apostles. It's their top priority. It's a constant in what they do, in what, in, on how they influence and serve the church, devoting themselves to prayer and to the ministry of the Word. The power of prayer, the power and influence that, that we can get from, from Scripture. That's how powerful prayer is. You know what? I learned um, something from my dear friend, Greg Steer, who ministers to thousands of youth around the world. He, he mentioned three things that we must pray for our young people. We must pray for them to develop gospel urgency, gospel fluency, and gospel strategy. I believe that like Paul, Paul trained Epaphras well. Not only that, he prayed for Epaphras as well. He's a well-trained disciple and a well-prayed Disciple, if there's such a term, we are developing leaders not only through trainings but through prayers. We will not treat them as a program in church. We will devote ourselves in prayer for the youth. Like Epaphras, Epaphras has the urgency to share the gospel, he has the fluency in sharing the gospel. And he has the strategy in sharing the gospel. That's what we will pray for, our youth and our singles in our church. In Colossians chapter 1, we will read again in verse 7, just as you learned it from Epaphras. You see, Paul is recognizing the work that Epaphras did. I am sure that Epaphras received the best training from Paul. You see, Epaphras was well-trained and Epaphras was prayed for really well. No doubt, prayer must become a priority in our ministry. It must be present in everything that we do. Prayer is a must. We must always pray for them. Point number two, we must pray for their spiritual growth. That's our prayer. We will not only train them, we will also pray that they will be growing spiritually starting early on in life. Starting at next gen, elevate, big ministry. We will start early. I remember that um, time when my, my, my auntie or my titas prayed for me early on in life. If not for those prayers, I will not be growing spiritually. They prayed for me and to minister to me using God's word. We must pray for their spiritual growth. In Colossians chapter 1, in verse 9, Paul again emphasized the importance of prayer. We have not ceased to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding so that you will walk in a manner Worthy of the Lord. Paul never ceased to pray for them. Paul never ceased to pray for Epaphras. So that Epaphras and the whole church will walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. We have not ceased to pray for you. That's what we'll do. We will not cease praying for the young people in our church. We will not cease to pray for the youth and the singles in our church. So that you will walk in a manner Worthy of the Lord to please Him in all respects. Bearing fruit in every good work. Increasing in the knowledge of God. What a wonderful prayer for our youth and our singles. And we will start today. We will start now. That we will continually pray for them. To encourage us more on how we will continue praying for our youth and our singles 
and how powerful prayer is in a person's life, let's hear this testimony from Mon Sayat. It was way back in 2009 during high school when I first heard the good news. I learned of our spiritual laws and knew about God's amazing grace. Since then, God has worked in my life to spread His grace. My classmates and I even established an initiative to reach the youth for Jesus. From one section, our campus ministry grew to reach the third and further high school students, but even then, God did not want to limit His work inside the classroom. Kasi noong 2010, we launched Street Bible Class with the main goal of reaching out to and introducing street children to Jesus. By God's grace, it continued all the way until my college. In 2016, I landed my first job as a marketing specialist in one of the leading appliance brands in the Philippines. I did not expect that along with this blessing, I would also encounter a series of trials and hardships. It was in that same year that my mother got confined in the hospital for months due to diabetes, eventually developing into stage 3 chronic kidney disease. The following year, a delivery truck crashed into our house. Even in our family, we experienced the death of two newborn nephews due to abnormalities in their heart. As my, as my mother battled with her illness, she got depressed to the point of asking God to take her already. I was so overwhelmed that I tried to run away from all these problems. I turned my mobile phone off so as not to receive any, any more bad news and traveled alone just to escape from reality and forget everything. Pero no 2017 no March, Reality eventually caught up with me as my mother passed away after giving up and choosing to remove her life support machine. I was disappointed. I felt worthless. I entertained thoughts of ending my life. There was one moment when I was passing in front of CCF building along C5 when I seriously considered running to middle of the road to be run over by a 10-wheeler truck. But God in His mercy and grace stopped me from harming myself. He convicted me of potentially causing unnecessary harm and trouble for others due to my actions. But even then, I begged God to take my life. I prayed, Lord, I am ready to die, but I will never kill myself in my way. Please help me. So my conversation with God continued. However, expressing my struggles to Him, it was extremely difficult to accept everything that had happened and I opted to isolate myself and not accept any advice from others. Every night, I cried and cried, questioning God each time, Bakit sa akin pa? Nagsaserve naman ako sa'yo ah. Bakit sa akin? May nagwa ba akong kasalanan na hindi or hindi nakakaaya sa'yo? Kung mali lang, please, kunin mo na ako. God in His time spoke and gave me an answer. One day, as I opened my devotional book, I read, I read Hebrews 13.5. I will not leave you nor forsake you. The Lord gave me His assurance that He loves me. He is sovereign. He is faithful. He is just. He reminded me that He has wonderful plan to me to fulfill His mission. Nalala ko yung sinabi ni Paul sa Philippians 1.21 For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. It is through God's word that He spoke to me personally and enabled, enabled to surrender everything to, to Him. My buhay ko, my family, my dreams, my work, my friends, and I trusted Him. Since then, I started to read the Bible again. I reached out to friends again and eventually joined a discipleship group. My love from God grew and soon found myself returning to serve Him again, joining the big singles ministry. A year after, God gave me the courage to respond to His call to disciple people by becoming a facilitator at Big Fridays and also as a lead group leader of youths from Elevate. God helped me to realize that yes, we all experience fear, shame, loneliness, broken homes, and broken hearts. Yes, we all hurt and need comfort and healing. But it is the Lord alone who can provide that comfort, healing, and restoration that lasts even unto eternity. I thank Jesus our Lord who helped me to be honest and transparent with Him about my deepest hurts. He continues to encourage me to be a 
open about my weaknesses and struggles, making my requests known to Him. He is my counselor and comforter. I believe He can heal me and will use me for His mission. Kaya naman today, God continues to use me in the work He began in my life more than a decade ago, rallying together all the people who God brought into my life, students, leaders, disciples, and people who love to serve God community. We hope we launch the Speak Bible class by organizing different community projects, such as outreach programs to schools and home care institutions as avenues to reach out to youths and share the gospel to different barangays and sitios. It also serves as a training ground for people in sharing the gospel whose passion is to serve God through community work. And out of the abundance of His grace, the Lord has entrusted me with more people to lead a discipleship group of single men. A response to His command in Matthew 28, 18-20 to make disciples of all nations. Again, my name is Mon Sayat, a servant of Christ, hunted down but never abandoned, knocked down but not destroyed. I have been and still am serving God and will do so until the end of my life. All this only made possible by and through God's grace alone. Again, to God be the glory. God established Mon's life and calling. His conversations with God reminded him that God won't leave him nor forsake him. That's why as one church, we will always pray for the spiritual growth of our next-gen kids, of our Elevate youth, and our big ministry singles. We are calling on the D-group leaders. We are calling on the Elevate group leaders. We are calling on all squad leaders. We are calling all life shapers to pray for the spiritual growth of our kids, youth, and singles. Which leads us to point number three. We must pray with thanksgiving and faith. We will pray with anticipation. We will pray in an attitude of faith. We believe something good will happen in the lives of these young kids. We, will, we believe that something good will happen in the lives of this youth who may be encountering challenges in life. Maybe they are hard to, to deal with. Maybe, you know, you are struggling in disciplining your, your child. Maybe you have a, you're having a hard time discipling the youth, the young kids, or the singles in your D group, in your Elevate group, whatever age they are right now, pray. Continue to pray for them with thanksgiving and faith. Let's read the last part of our passage from Colossians. Strengthened with all power according to His glorious might for the attaining of all steadfastness and patience, joyously giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in life. You see, prayer is a very powerful thing. And we pray with thanksgiving in faith. Faith is important in our prayer. Let's read this verse in Matthew 21, 22. And whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. We must pray, always pray for our youth and singles. We must pray for their spiritual growth. And we must pray with thanksgiving because you will receive all of these things that we are asking from God if you have faith. A faith a prayer filled with faith. Whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. I love new beginnings. And, and as we um, start the year, let us make prayer a priority, believing that God hears us, that God will help us in our ministry, to our youth, and our singles. I actually brought my Bible with me, which I kept since I was seven years old. I treasure this. I value this. This is a 36-year-old Bible. This might be older than the youth and the kids and the, some singles are watching right now. This Bible became a constant reminder to, on how powerful prayer is to me. That anyone 
who will come to God in faith can experience God's grace. And that God can help anyone be transformed by the power of God's love. This Bible reminded me that there are adults who took time, invested their time and effort, even money, for me. A young small boy, seven years old, prayed for me, intentionally discipled me. I am a product of persistent prayer. If not for my tita nana who gave me my Bible, if not for my tita dada who still prays for me up until now, I won't be here today sharing this devotion with you. That is the power of prayer. Prayer can change people. Prayer can change the kids. Prayer can change the youth. Prayer can change the singles. Prayer can change our church. Prayer can change the world. Let's come together in prayer for all our young people. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you right now, lifting up the, the next generation of our church, your church. We pray for next gen. We pray for Elevate. We pray for a big ministry. We pray for each one of them to have a vibrant relationship with you and with the people around them, to have healthy relationships, the right kind of relationship. We pray, Lord God, that they will develop a life lived in purity, Lord God, developing self-control to become excellent students and marketplace leaders. We pray that the youth, the singles, of this church will walk in a manner worthy of you, Lord, like Paul to Epaphras. We will always pray for them, care for them, and encourage them to become bold in sharing the gospel, evangelize their friends, discipling people. All of this, Lord, we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you all. Good evening, everyone, and thank you, Pastor Eric, for that wonderful, wonderful devotion tonight. Wow, we've gone through five days of prayer and fasting and feasting with the Word of God. Have you experienced any breakthrough so far? I'm sure you have. If there is anything that you have experienced that you would like to share, please send us your testimony so that we may be able to be blessed and have others be blessed as well. So tonight, just as Pastor Eric has mentioned, our prayer focus will be for our youth and our singles. Why is it so important for us to lift our youth and singles up to the Lord? You see, they are the next generation. Someone once said, Christianity is just one generation away from being obsolete. And so it is our heart's desire as a body, as the body of Christ, as the movement, as the church of Jesus, to pray for the next generation because they are our future leaders and our future pastors. If we do not disciple the next generation, if we do not pray for the next generation, then it is possible that they will grow up not knowing the Lord. So tonight, we lift them up in prayer from next gen to elevate to singles. And just like in the past days, what we'd like to do is for us to follow the template of Acts. We go, we start with adoration. We lift up the name of God and say His attribute and recognize His beauty. Then we go into confession if there is any sin in us, deep-seated sin, hidden sin, favorite sin, this is the time for us to confess before the Lord and ask for His forgiveness. And then we move on to our prayer of thanksgiving. Let's thank the Lord, not only for what He has done for us last year, but what He has been doing for us, to, to us, through us, and in us since Monday this week let's thank the lord for the life-changing experience that we've had with him let's thank the lord in anticipation for all the breakthroughs that we will experience 
until tomorrow and in the months to come. And finally, we go into supplication. I'm sure that there are still things in your heart that you want to express to God. It doesn't matter how big or how small your request is. It doesn't matter how big, how minor, or how major your concerns are. God is willing to listen to you. Just as a loving father loves to listen to his children. Offer him your requests. Tell him what you want. And then wait in anticipation for the answer that he will give. And so, just as in the previous nights, we are going to show you some slides. These are mere guides on what to pray for. We will be praying for our youth, for our singles. We will be praying together as one body. I will be back in a while to close all of us in prayer.
Let's all pray. Heavenly Father, you always look at the potential of people. You have never seen any of us as we are at the moment. In your greatness, in your power, in your compassion, in your mercy. You see us for what we can become, not who we are at the moment. You mold us according to the future purposes you have for us, not of who we are at the moment. And so, Father, tonight we lift up to you our next generation. We know that our lifetime is fixed. And we pray, Lord, as, we, as Moses has prayed, Father, teach us to number our days that we may present to you a heart of wisdom. And one of the wisdom, the heart of wisdom that we would like to present to you is that we have intentionally prayed and nurtured our young people. Father, we lift you up. We lift up to you all our children, those who are in next gen, those who are in our youth ministry and all the youth in this country. We pray, Father, for our singles. We pray, Father, that you will guard their heart and keep them pure. We pray most specially, O Lord, for Pastor Marty and Julius, whom you have given the task of spearheading our youth movement. I pray, Father, that they will continue to have a heart of compassion and love for the young. We lift up to you, Pastor Ikoy, whom at this time you have assigned to, be, to safeguard and to be a custodian of the singles movement of CCF. I pray that you will give these men perseverance in what they're doing, that they will never tire, that they will continue and move on, knowing that everything that they do is not in vain. I pray, Father, that they will continue to inspire and lead in accordance to your will. I pray for our leaders that we will embrace the fact that our children and the next generation should be mentored intentionally by us. I pray for our parents that they will have patience for their children and see them just the way you see them, loved and valuable in your eyes. And so, Father, with one heart and with one mind, we lift up to you our youth and our single singles. For all the youth and singles, not only of CCF, not only of this church, not only in the universal body of your son, but every single and every youth in this nation and in the world. I pray, Father, that they will seek you and that as they seek you, they will find you because you have promised that when we seek you with all our hearts, you will show yourself to us. You will reveal to us who you are. And so, Father, in these uncertain times, in these most difficult times for our youth, for the young people, for the next generation, help us become their light that we may help them and guide them and lead them as they navigate through the difficulties of growing up to make the right choices according to your will. And may we just help them, walk with them, so that they may be, we may become good models to them, not of who we have been, but of who you are in our lives. We lift them up to you, Father. In the mighty name of your Son, Jesus, Amen.